on this episode of the Coach of the Casual. Me and the Casuals just got back from UFC 296. We're going to break down how much money we won on our picks. I think we were pretty good on that weekend. We're going to talk about our boy Drickus versus Strickland coming up 297. Break down what our fights, our picks. I might have changed teams. Hear my opinion on it. I think Casuals not going to like it. It is good to be back. We were just talking about it. we haven't been in the studio inside oh. the studio in over a month. I know it's like nice here, <laughs> you know. Well, it's just because we had gotten so even when uh, Diego, our one of our producers, uh, he was saying episode sixteen doesn't seem like it's just flown by. Honestly, yeah. When I hear that every time, I'm like, whoa, sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, I feel like we're just still bullshit, and we don't even know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> when you, because you had a podcast before, I've had a podcast before. I think, I think I only got to like twenty three episodes, twenty four. I thought we got to thirty. Oh, that's I think I got hard. to five, five or something. And it's I was just, like, it's been, six. it's been incredibly easier with a co-host. I think people yeah. have liked our dynamic. Hell yeah. yeah, it's a lot easier with a team. Shout out to Bad Bet. Bad Bet. This episode's man. brought to you by Bad Bet Productions. Um, but dude, it's, it's good to be back. The it was fun in Vegas. I mean, it was incredibly fun in Vegas. Yeah, but it's just it something so about fun. something about being home. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I think like our first one there was Bobby. You know, yeah. and that one's just released out, and we were so like, ah. And then the Bilal one was kind of like, it was fun, yeah. Yeah, that was fun, but it kind of happened kind of out of our schedule. He's like, yeah. okay. And then the Drickus one was fell in our lap. Yeah, we fell in our lap. So yeah, and we were like comfortable with that third one, you know, but yeah, dude. It's first like, traveling podcast. <laughs> first traveling one, and it was smooth. It was, a, it was at the Encore Casino Hotel. A lot of fun, but. What I've noticed with a lot of the fighters, what I've really liked is that they've said that we're different, right? That, yeah. that it's not like an interview thing. It's they're just having fun. But speaking of the traveling, you know, for my for my other company I have, I've had to do a ton of travel. As a fighter, did traveling take a big toll on you? Because when I was first when I was first gonna be a traveling businessman, I was like, Oh, that'll be cool. But once you've been traveling for a while, you're like, dude, this effing sucks. I hate being one. What is it like, especially as you're getting ready for a fight, having to travel? I mean, I think, like, traveling is hard for that, but it's not the same. Like, you're gone every week or every other week with yours. I mean, yeah, you do travel a lot for the fight, but, like, I would go live somewhere for my camp for six weeks, and you're gone for a long time. So that does – that is hard. <clears throat> but I was, like, a single man, so I'm not really, like – I never had a kid at the point. Me and Wit were, like, both – uh young single adults yeah. so like you know it was she would come travel i don't know it wasn't very hard while like these other fighters that have families you know like bobby was saying like he's got a bunch of kids and stuff like that he's got to train where he is you, you know you know that was same with court because even in drickus's podcast he talked about how him and his brother would just train and then party what was the big difference because you had fights after you were already with wit like no no i had like one kind of and once she was born, I was kind of like already on the out, yeah. you know. But you did fight. Was yeah, it, I did was fight. It a once. Big time difference for you because it was my last fight. <laughs> I was out there. I was like, "What the hell am I doing, man? Yeah. What is going on?" I remember being, and at that point, like, I think for any fighter out there, if you question, and we'll bring us right into our segment about two ninety six, Tony Ferguson. Like, if you can't put it together, and I, you know, I felt like I just couldn't put it together any- anymore, and it was. Maybe they call it what the uh, what do they call it? It's the uh, the ets or the it's or what's it called? The yips. The yips. The yips. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. yips. And I think like we see right now, there's what who's the undefeated or the defeated guys? Strickland or Tony? Tony uh, can't catch a win. Can't. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is it? Those guys Robert on big losing Whitaker. Uh, it was. Uh, it was. Uh, who was that? It's someone little, else. Owen Hawaiian that went on a long one. Yeah, I saw that. Like, who's gonna be the next one to get a win? And I was like, at that point, man, I, you're just like, what am I doing? Yeah. Like, if I can't find a win, I'm done, dude. You know. Uh, so- and like some of my losses early on were kind of like bullshit. Like, it's one thing you lose a decision. Ah man, like a close decision could have gone either way. You get pissed off, but that doesn't feel like oh I'm done. But like man, dude, if you can't put together a win in seven fights, like Tony looked terrible. You know what I've noticed though is that a, 
a couple of the fighters that, and we don't even need to mention, but we we even saw a couple of them down in Vegas. It's almost like Arrested Development, right? Where <laughs> where they were, you know, just the height of this sport and just rock stars, and now they're older men and they're still doing some like they're still stuck in that party phase. Yeah. Have you have you seen that? I mean, it, you we even talked about you're like, oh, I was really sad to see that guy like that. You know? Yeah, I mean? yeah. Like we don't want to mention names, no, yeah. but you see people and you're like. Whoa, like, you know, they barely uh, know what's, you know, going, what's on, going, yeah. going on. Like, And, I mean, like, you're right there, too, and you could see some of these people. And, and I think it's because of the thrill, man. The fighting is a thrill. It's a drug. It's like no other drug there is. And it's like, I mean, you get out you, of there, you, you don't feel sleep. Like you were, what, what oh, I should have said that drug. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. What, what, what got you – do you feel like you were lucky to leave when you did? What, what, was the ma- what were some of the main things that helped you be like, okay, it's really done? Well, I mean, what, why did you get out when others didn't? Because you were even part of the party lifestyle. I mean, you like yeah. – when you were – you know, it's like you're making money fighting and getting to see the world. Yeah, party. What, what, I was young. What, what and you before we, you know, I was yeah. a single dude traveling the world, man, like as a fighter on TV. So you get thrown so much. Mm-hmm. Like you go – literally, I would show up to Abu Dhabi and there was people screaming your name like walking down a uh, road and people like hey you know and it's it gets to you it is hard it's weird it's a different experience but I think like you get so addicted to that because now that doesn't happen like we even saw old time you know big name fighters right. and people are like oh what's up bro you were one of my favorite fighters yeah but if you see Conor McGregor they're like ah yeah. you know Colby he has to have security yeah. around and it's so, and, and I for think me, even like when we're walking around local fights and people are like, oh, coach of the casual, like, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, it's fun. So to be at the top of the sport and also to have been, and to- fighting is different because it doesn't like, other than Conor McGregor, he's the one, you know, that made it through, transcended, yeah. transcended. But like for the most part, you could be a huge MMA fighter and you could still go to the grocery store and have a relatively uh, normal experience because yeah. most people are fight fans, aren't going to like, ah, like it's a dude yeah. most likely in his mid 20s so right. he's gonna be like oh what's up bro i'm a big fan yeah. you know what i mean yeah. like it doesn't and that's what's kind of cool but i think the problem is is the party lifestyle like vegas you can get to any club you want if you're a fighter i mean yeah. you see it like the fighters just can walk in because they're all in fight shorts, fans. And a, shorts and a t-shirt, t-shirt yeah. yeah yeah and like <laughs> walking in with two girls yeah. that they're like oh you want to get in the club with me and then they're like yeah come on in and yeah and then next thing you know someone goes we would do the same thing and someone would be like, Hey, come to our table because someone with money, like, you know, even yourself, if you bought a table with a bunch of alcohol, you don't care if you're drinking it, right? Yeah. Like you would want a bunch of fighters so to have you hung fun. Out with that that fighter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so like I would go to the table and the next thing you know, we're fucking dr- or if you're drinking Don Perry on, yeah. you know, like blast what's the yeah. other one? Like uh Crystal. Like they're yeah. like, Hey, you like Crystal? You're like, sure, yeah. I don't know what that is. I grew up poor as shit. <laughs> So what? But what was it that got you out? Like, how did was it hard to get off of that lifestyle? Is it, I mean, oh yeah, I mean it's a, it's still like hard to be off that lifestyle sometimes. You know, like real talk between me and you. Some days you're, I guess, between me and you and the cameras. Yeah. <laughs> some days you're just, uh, I, you miss that thrill. Like you know, nothing else will experience that level of an experience. And sometimes, some you know party favors and a wild night with some girls feels close yeah but then you wake up in the morning and you don't and yeah. i've been there i actually would wake up in the morning and i would like one time i like, just cried like cried and yeah. i was like what is going on with my body like i have never cried before in yeah. my life and i was like i just had the quote-unquote wild party night yeah. like should have been fun. yeah yeah this should have been the epitome of what i was trying to achieve and i, I think that was one thing that really changed it for me. And I, you know, I think uh, I was trying to figure out why I would be in the room and be able to beat anybody. Like as an athlete, I was the top guy in the room. Like, I don't want to name names, but anybody that even right now that you know in the UFC at my weight, I beat the crap out of them in the room. But wait, does that hold on a second? Lightweight. Which is 155? Yeah. There's some mean 155. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, name any top top level guy, and I've probably sparred him or beat him. And one some time, you know, and I was 
getting invited out to camps and paid actually and went out to a big name fighter that what was, was that kind of pay like what do they pay guys to come nothing out? dude it was just more honestly i was going because i was still fighting too and i wanted the training as well yeah and they you know we show up to a gym i'm not going to say the location because everyone will figure out which <laughs> location right and there's nobody there and i show up just drove there from utah and that's a few different ones that are close by, <laughs> I know, but you can drive to California, Vegas, Denver, anywhere. So I drive in, and uh, I'm with Wit and my partner, and she's not into MMA. Like, you know, she's... Yeah, she barely listens to this podcast. <laughs> she doesn't. She actually does not listen to it. Like, but, uh, like, even at the fights, like, our wives were like, can we sit next to each other to talk? I'm like, no, we're watching fights. So, like, we show up, and there's... Uh, their team there and there's no one else there in the gym the gym's closed down and it's just me and him sparring and i proceeded to beat the shit out of him <laughs> for five rounds to the point where he ran out of the gym and screaming and throwing and then my wife's like it's like are we safe like okay we won't name any names but is this a very well-known fighter yeah and then another one i've been in go down to vegas and i would go and spar everybody down in vegas you know and there'd be top five top 10 uh, lightweights there. And that's actually how Ali and Ray Seifo signed me for the PFL. I was out of the UFC and they're like, oh, we don't know if we want to sign you. So I showed up to Vegas and I was like, "What's the, who's the biggest name guy here? Boom, me and you, let's spar in the cage. Went yeah. in there and just proceeded to beat the shit out of him. And then they're like, okay, we'll sign you. So then I was like, okay, what's the difference? How can I not relate that to my performance yeah and you know some performances i would have great performances like when i've knocked out darush and edwards and like these different pretty good fighters and or great fighters and stuff and then i started going to counseling like uh what's it called sports psychology sports, sports psychology like right chael. what like chael <laughs> chael did that yeah and so that was the that was the answer and then i'm going to sports psychology and then it's just breaking down to real psychology there yeah. is no difference yeah. and i start figuring out like why i started fighting like why i wanted to do this why am i putting my body through it and i just i think that was one of the biggest difference while if i didn't i probably would still be like trying to fight you know now that you've got years removed from the sport of of competing yeah it's a year or two now when's your last fight but two, oh yeah, it's years, almost like three years. four years coming up on yeah. four years. Yeah, looking back on some of your losses, do you think if you had, with today's brain and and your body's prime, then do you think you you could have won a lot of those? Or oh yeah, what what, what tripped you up then? When a fighter looks back on his on his career, with uh, an older man's wisdom, yeah, what 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 what, what things could you have done differently? Um, honestly, the biggest mistake I made, I overtrained. Yeah, way too much. Like. My bo I'm healthier now than I was because I would just be every, like, you know, because you're scared. And I wasn't willing to admit, like, I am terrified. I would sometimes, like, remember uh, Kevin was talking about when you're high watching a fight, you're like, oh, shit, I got to do that. <laughs> and that, you know what I mean? Like, so I would be that, like, that's really. And I think I just never admitted the actual, like, like it's a real crazy situation. You're locking, walking in front of millions of people. The only other people that experienced it were Roman gladiators, you know, and yeah. people this, I have friends that have been to war and fought and they're like that. The fighting is something. Scary. Yeah. They're like the war, you just, you get shot, you're dead. And they're like, <laughs> did you ever watch that show community? Uh, somewhat. Well, there was this one episode where like they have like a paintball war, and this old man is like, "I'm terrified," and I went to real war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's like literally like Dom, uh, our, one of our trainers. He's like, he was in real war, and he's like fought, and he's like, he's like, that's messed up, man. He's like, between rounds, they're like looking at you. Come on, keep going, and this other kid's trying to beat your ass. And he's like, you know, real war, you just kind of hide, get time to recover, and so yeah. it's kind of like a really an intense experience, you know, and. I think you get addicted to the experience. The same as gambling. Like, yeah. you know, it's very – and, like, I was trying to use that analogy for you. Like, you get really into gambling, but are you not gambling away half of your yearly income? Yeah, it's not something that if I lose, I'm basically ruined. Yeah, maybe dead. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Uh, injured forever. I yeah. mean, one of my fights I lost, uh, Carlos Diego Fiera – who tested positive for the most steroids in his system. 
blew out my elbow. I was beating the shit out of him at UFC, I think like 150 something. Beating the shit out of him. First round. And then he blew out my elbow just grabbing it because <laughs> he was so strong. Yeah. And now that's a lifetime injury. Like the rest of my life. I had to like get up, stretch it, roll it out, you know. It's got to be. It, when did you, like when do most fighters realize, okay, I'm going to take the gamble on this one? Because the thing is, it's a huge gamble where, okay, I'm going to devote my entire time. and Because when you're young, you're doing it because it's fun and it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's a, an escape. But when you decide it's a career, it means I'm also not going to go to school. I'm not going to do other careers, which will give me the skills to be able to do it. It's I'm pushing all my chips into the table. And a lot of guys do that and lose, right? Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, they, they try and get into the UFC by 38 years old. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It's a waste, like, right? What are but, you doing? But, yeah. But when did you know it was like, okay, I'm pushing all the chips in? Day one. Mm. I'm a, I was cut from a different cloth, bro. <laughs> I'm from Palestinian refugees, man. Like day one, I was like, I was came out of the womb ready. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you did other things, right? You got you got a degree, right? Yeah, I mean, I was in college, but I didn't. I mean, I'm. I guess this is 15 years ago. Like I was gonna fight in the UFC, but you're making for a title fight then 10 and 10. Yeah. And then you know, Rich Franklin would go to teach middle school science yeah. you know what i mean yeah. that was the reality of it so i was in school i was like oh i'm gonna fight it's gonna be fun but at the end of it i'm gonna have to have a have, to have something have a real job and then it blew up and luckily now I, you can own gyms and do pretty well you know like it's a huge thing but before then i was never like oh this is like even if it is like gsp i was that was my goal but i mean he still at that time was making you know six figures yeah which uh, That's great money. Great money, but uh, how long is that going to last you? Nothing you know, compared to now. Yeah, I mean, and looking back, he made a lot of money, but he still has to have his consistent sponsors to live. You know, you something know? that it, it was actually in the Bobby Green episode. It, it's I've said this a couple times, but um, having started to meet fighters, I've I've been a UFC fan since I was fourteen years old. You know, yeah. watch, watching. UFC 100, Brock Lesnar versus Frank Mir, right? Mm -hmm. Watching Anderson versus Chael, watching all these dominant, I mean, these uh, these legends, right? Now that I've started to meet them, and, and when you realize it's just a normal guy and everything, it's it's kind of tough, especially, I mean, it's like now I don't want to watch Mike Perry fight. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I like that guy yeah, a lot. Yeah, so I don't cool want to see him get hit and things, but it's 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 a different mentality for me as a casual, whereas you guys are like, I love it, I, I, I yeah. need it. But one of the things that really stuck out to me about the Bobby Green episode was, you know, it's you talked about kind of the crabs in the bucket, but that nobody nobody helps each other, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, is that a is is that a sentiment you think that a lot of the fighters that you know you got train partners, you got buddies, but in the end it is a one man sport. I mean, Mazadal, uh, Colby, yeah, training partners, best friends, but yeah, at the end it's uh, your own sport. That's a but don't you. Don't you feel? I mean, the thing is, you and I are pretty close now. And yeah. for me, I up and for most of my life, you know, I, I, I don't have a lot. Of, I think men don't really make friends when you're. Yeah, adults, yeah, it's they, hard to make. Oh, we got friends. me, you, Deuce. You know, we yeah. got you know a couple boys that we hang out with, right? But is it hard to have to be so alone? And I'm not trying to be a, a, a psychologist or anything, but is it hard to know that really I'm alone? This guy could stab me in the back at any minute. I mean. What is the mentality being around those kind of people? Yeah, you know. And having to be one of those people. Yeah, that's actually a good question, man. I was always, yeah, I took it as my own sport. And I even had, I was part of teams. And, you know, like I left teams to go train at other teams to get better training. And, you know, people are like ride or die for their team. But I always, I mean, I grew up boxing, wrestling, doing all these individual sports. My wrestling team sucked. So I would go to wrestling meets and my whole team would lose minus me. Right. So I was never like, but I didn't, I would go and do what I had to do to get better. And so I think that's like the difference is like, I know that. And even like in the room, man, I always knew that any of these guys would fight me. Yeah. I know that. Like, and that's why I think I've always been, and I've gotten there, but like the only one that was my real brother was my brother. I mean, my brother would train and. You know, we would never fight each other for real, but anyone else, like, I knew they would. They'd even say it, like, oh, I'd fight you. And then you're like, okay, well, then you think you can beat me. And right. so I would always make statements in rooms and have to be like, yeah, I'm top dog. And who, I think that's Who would win between you and your brother? 
Bro, he was wild, man. Some days he'd get me. First of all, your brother's incredibly handsome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a good <laughs> looking dude. Bigger. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what He's a male model. That's why when he was fighting and he was about to wanting to do the whole fight, yeah, I'm like, no, 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 no. I was looking. like, you're too good looking, bro. Model. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. You <laughs> you look, I look like a dog that should be fighting. <laughs> and I'm like, he's you're like too goddamn pretty. What are you doing? Too handsome, yeah. Bro, and me and my brother would have wars, dude. Yeah. Like, And that's honestly the only re- – and then you see nowadays – the best fighters in the world are now doing their camps like boxers. Yeah. Like a boxer doesn't have a room and it's a team and everyone's working together. No, you're going, if you're there, you're at. To make the top guy. The yeah, Waleed. Uh, what's his last name now? Waleed. Waleed. Abdul. Oh. Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, he converted his on. What? Javante. Oh, Javante Davis changed his name? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Converted to Islam. But anyways, like he has a camp, and his camp is uh, all about him. So then he's fighting, you know, Ryan Garcia. He brought in a bunch of people like Ryan Garcia. You know what I mean? And so it's like that's where MMA is going because there's money in it. Before, we were making 10 and 10, so we'd all be like, let's train together. Let's be friends, yeah, right? let's be friends. And then just off of being around enough, I think you become friends and trustworthy partners, someone I can train with that I know is not going to hurt me. But then I've always been like, I got to have my friends outside of fighting. Do you? Like, we're friends. out. Like, yeah, I train you in the gym, but like... Uh, if we were fight, yeah, like train. I tried to. Yeah. Train is a yeah. strong word. <laughs> you hurt me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, I try. It's a strong word, but like how outside long, how of the gym. How long did we try to do that triangle the other day? Oh my god, I like gave up, dude. You couldn't get it. I was like, <laughs> oh my god, dude. I was You're like, like oh, I'm the triangle. And I'm just squeezing you with my yeah, chin. Yeah, I was like, I'm and you were just getting mad at me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, but then it was like we can fucking laugh about it, but like other fighters, you'd be like. No, I would triangle you yeah. for real. <laughs> You're like, okay, bro. Yeah, dude, that was that's interesting. Uh, getting back to Vegas though, Vegas was incredibly fun. Uh, which was your favorite interview? It's tough. So we had Bobby Green, we had Bilal Muhammad, we had Drickus Duplessis. Honestly, Bobby Green. Bobby Green. Was he fun. was so funny, dude. He was funny. Drickus was fun, dude. Yeah, Drickus was like. Drickus I was mean, like the most attentive to us, like yeah. talking back and driving. Yeah, I fell in love with Drickus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like man love. Yeah. <laughs> he, he wooed the me. The most sacred of love. Yeah, yeah. He wooed me, but I thought Bobby Green Bobby surprised was fun. me. Bilal funny. was fun. Yeah, Bilal was way. I like Bilal because he finally came out of his shell. Yeah. Like, you know, he was like, yeah, I'll I'll be any of these guys. And since then, he's gotten the title shot. Yeah, there which we go. We directly made happen. Yeah, I think, I think he 100%. <laughs> I don't think Dana was going to do it until he saw him. Yeah, I think Dana. <laughs> watched our show <laughs> yeah. to make sure you keep watching dana well we're we know gonna... we know ariel watched because oh, yeah? we got reshared by uh oh yeah he did didn't he by uh what's his company mma fighting, fighting i think yeah yeah and they and they uh they gave they us credit us. Yeah. yeah some people didn't credit us <laughs> so we're starting to watermark you yeah out we're, there we're you trolls after. it's like dana white uh on the streamers we're coming after him yeah yeah we're coming after him. <laughs> <laughs> We yeah, could, we got him. Yeah, you got to be the dumbest. <laughs> that's effing illegal. Yeah, that's effing illegal. Yeah, those are my favorite. <laughs> but, hey, we got to talk about the hot streak, bro. Dude, unbelievable. Unbelievable. So we were here with uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I got to show off the rolling that I bought with the winnings. That was, that was the most insane night and a half of gambling I've ever – so I cleared that night. Only, only blackjack we played, right? Yeah. Uh, I cleared 43 Gs. Dude, and I wouldn't believe it if I didn't watch it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Man. There we go, miss. baby. And then we bet big on uh, Leon. Yeah. So what'd you clear? You cleared a couple Gs, dude. Yeah, a couple Gs, bro. Yeah. I went big on Leon. I mean, dude, the line was so close to me. Yeah. I was like, that was going to. And the thing is, you know, just the stuff we had seen, Colby looked like he was in trouble. What yeah. do you think of this stat? Because uh, this is Bilal going into this title fight, is that any 35 year old or older trying to fight the championship has lost except for one yeah do you think uh, that's... 170 and below though yeah 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 welterweight <laughs> and below so what do you think about that you yeah think that's a tough trouble? stat bro i mean as a 35 year old man that's retired from fighting like dude i was when i was freaking 25 i was nasty mean dude yeah. you could hit me with a baseball bat and i'd bite it down and be like yeah let's go you no know joke. i'm 32 years old i was standing in my bedroom yesterday just standing talking to my wife and my back went out yeah <laughs> 
I was like, yeah, oh, I know, hell? bro. Yeah, that's like legit. Like I've thrown out my back before. And just standing or sneezing. Yeah, just sneezing. I did, and I have never did that until I was in my thirties. Yeah, you know. So yeah, that's a that's a tough. How are you one. gonna go like fist fight or get kicked in the face by dude when you sneeze and you can't move for a? Yeah, of that's like so. That's I mean, but here's the thing: everyone Bilal's been out. You know, supposed to be outmatched in all of them, and you know he's kind of came out the winner. I don't know. I really like Bilal, but I think Leon, this last fight, he wasn't doing. It. He's almost like out of sign. Don't don't you feel like where he yeah. lets you bring the fight to him? And I think this is uh, his Strickland. Yeah, Bilal's his Strickland. You think so, bro? I believe it, man. Does Bilal push pressure? No, he's, he yeah. doesn't finish fights though. No, but he, does, he pushes pressure. He doesn't like Strickland. Strickland doesn't finish fights. Yeah, he puts pressure on. And that's why I'm saying, like, I think Bilal underdog, I'm betting big on that. I don't know. I think Leon, I really like Bilal. What are the odds right now? I don't know. I don't think they're out yet. Oh, they're not out yet? Yeah, because yeah, it's not all signed. Yeah. Hopefully, it'll be on UFC 300 down in Vegas, <laughs> April 16th. put him on? That's that, only four-month turnaround. You think they would do that? I mean, dude, he wants to fight Rocky. He said, "No, Leon, I'm, I'm saying for Rocky, it'd be a four yeah. month turnaround. You think he would do that? Yeah, I think so. I think they've kind of agreed to that timeline. Three hundred. There's, there's some big fights coming out. That's gonna dude, be that's gonna be fight. awesome. Yeah, we're not allowed. To, our, our our producer tells us we're not allowed to talk about future fights. Yeah, yet. too far <laughs> ahead. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we'll talk about that one later. So stay tuned in. Yeah. Make sure you subscribe because then we'll talk about it." But uh, one of the big things uh, from that weekend is that we slammed on uh, we slammed on uh, Leon, yeah, and we slammed on Cody, Cody Garber, Cody, oh, our yeah. boy Cody, and we didn't even get to see because we were on the way, we were in the limo, and we yeah. were watching it live. And, and dude, it was so long he to get in there. Out. I know, but I watched that a few times. And he just went to sleep. Yeah, that was filthy, dude. I want to see Cody versus Diego Fiera. Or Di no, Diego uh, Fig. Or Figaro, Figaro, yeah, Fig Figueredo, Figueredo, that's, that's it, right. yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, don't you think Cody? So we're we're actually trying to work on getting Cody here on the show. Yeah. Uh, what's your thoughts on Cody's age? Because Cody's old he's and thirty two. Oh, I want to say that's not bad. Yeah, he's not bad. He's just so been he's in still, it a long time. Though. Yeah, he's, he's just been young since he was nineteen. Wow. Dude. Yeah, okay. he's just a legend. But I think, dude. Last run, he gets his belt and hopefully he retires. As Do you the think champ. that time off helped his chin at all? Because he was chinny. Yeah, who knows? He hasn't been hit, mm. right? He didn't get hit last fight. Fight before, uh, the dude only hit him once, but he out wrestled him a lot. And he did get rocked in that fight, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is he still with Alpha Male? No, he's in Vegas full time with Coach Nick uh, Sick. Six, six, what's his last name? Coach Nick. Yeah, yeah, he's in Vegas with Coach Nick, and Coach Nick's Coach of the Year. So I, I think they've come up with great game plans. Coach Nick's a realistic. He's like, you know, you got a uh, chinny chin, so let's Keep figure out. Yeah, let's figure out ways. Well, that to was play. his problem. Like, I was watching a video on Cody, and it was the whole thing about him versus TJ, basically, like the whole saga. Yeah, and TJ never or Cody never fixed his problem of leaving his his chin super exposed when he throws. Yeah, he always keeps that chin up. But do you think that's something that can be like if if you're so used to that? Because the thing is, a UFC fighter could beat ninety nine point nine percent of the world. Yeah, in a fight, so they don't really need to worry about. Fixing that ingrained thing, but when you're fighting against the other elites, you're gonna. Is it able? Are you able to get those bad habits? What bad habits did you have? You talked about you'd go too hard, too fast. Yeah, too hard. You, you'd you'd jump on something and you'd get countered. One of my hard. worst habits too, I'd like return my hands low and I'd almost like be too uh, <laughs> like stressing on mine. And I, I did change it. I how went, I how moved, do you fix it? Because it's got to be hella repetition. Yeah, I went and moved to San Francisco with Coach Tarek Azim. Who's now the one of the coaching staffs of the 49ers who yeah. are killing it? Yeah. Yeah. And Tarek was, you know, Jake's coach, all these other legendary, uh, Marshawn Lynch. And <clears throat> he just is like, yeah, you got to change it through repetition and like awareness and working. And like, so we just would spend hours and hours and hours drilling, hitting pads, sitting there. And I was able to fix it. Um, do you think that what are some things that uh, people can't really get rid of that if you or is there nothing that can't really get rid of? 
Dude, I don't know, man. Because why wouldn't Cody have fixed that problem a long time ago? Well, it's like the same thing with you, man. Like, why don't you fix any of your little things sometimes? It's yeah, but not the difference is, like, that's his profession. I mean, it, Yeah, it, but, I mean, everybody's profession. <laughs> you have little things that you're like, ah, I got to send that email back and... Well, I'll I got get around to it. it probably, yeah, it probably won't catch me on this one. Yeah, and not even it's just that. It's just like, all right, I'm a. Tra I trained enough of it. You yeah. know, I've done ten hours. I think that's plenty. While in reality, it's just like anything in life is just those little things over and over and over and over and over again. What's more dangerous, overtrained or undertrained? Overtrained, and that's what I've overtrained learned. Overtrained is worse than undertrained. Yeah, I would rather be a little undertrained because fat is good. Everyone has this bad idea, like, oh, I want a six pack. You know, also has six pack, a POW survivor. Yeah. You'll have a six pack or a cancer survivor, yeah. because they look malnourished. Emaciated, yeah. Yeah. While like, you need a little fat. That's easy energy burning in your body. So if you're like a little undertrained, you have more energy storage compared to being overtrained, where you don't have that. And your chinny, your chin comes from being hard sparring exhaustion overtrained and there's ways to tell it like some people i would check my heart rate every morning and you can consistently see what your heart rate is and off of that kind of tell yeah what you need to be doing yeah how many of your coaches as you were coming up would focus on that part as opposed to just trying to run into wall and technique Dude, so okay let's use this as our segment though because i want to go into the drick is strickland fight yeah. talking about this because I believe Strickland's got the better conditioning, and it's been proven. That's I. The thing it's is, been proven, and so Strick or Drickus wants to fix his uh, cardio, right? And I saw a picture on his thing. He's got his heart rate heart monitor rate. because he's convinced that he's overtrained. But that is bullshit because science isn't real. The science <laughs> of it is Hold all up. fake. Science isn't real. How no, do you, do you on like on uh, anything like. Uh, sports related science is all fake because they say things like, oh, keep your heart rate at this level, you know, this percentage and blah, blah, blah. But you know, when you're in a real fight, you're going beyond thresholds yeah. that are not there, that someone can't measure. So, you know, the same idea as a mom lifting a car right. with a dress. So that's why you see anybody that goes to the science of conditioning and Drickus wants to solve his conditioning issue, and this isn't going to be it. The solve is put yourself through hell more because now he's like, oh, I had a great workout. I stayed in my uh, percentage. Yeah. You know who else started doing that? TJ Dillshaw. And he was with he Sam. Do, he had to do EPO to keep up with it. That's it. That's the truth, bro. That's the only reason he they do it <laughs> is when they're doing EPO. And I don't think Drickus is well, on one EPO of the big, because one of, he gets tired of shit. One of the crazy <laughs> things about him is he's dropping 40 pounds to make it. Yeah. And he's already he looked he looked jacked. Sitting next to you, he's walking around at 225. Same with, I mean, Strickland's probably dropping 20 to 30. 40 pounds now? Yeah. I mean, Drickus is big. Yeah, Drickus is big. But I think the cardio is... And, you know, I love Drickus. I became a Drickus Ed fan. But then I was watching his fights today before this, and I was like, that's why he gets tired. His wrestling's sloppy. But it doesn't matter if he gets tired if he's such a bomber. I mean, But Strickland's fights, the worst thing. If you look at his fights, almost all of them are finishes, and it's such a it's such a widespread amount of either knockouts, TKOs, or submissions. He submits a lot because his base is judo, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't think you need as much cardio. What What are you trading? Are you taking more cardio, less less strength, or more strength, less cardio? Uh, the fight for Strickland. If I was his coach, I'd be like, we got to do cardio. Don't you think he just takes Strickland down? Strickland's not this world class wrestler. Strickland's Jake told us. Jake but, but literally, a, Jake he is, is the hardest striker. guy on top. And he goes, man, Strickland's really hard to hold down. Yeah, but Strickland at his core is a striker. I mean, he tried to strike with with uh, Pocock. He's a black belt, though. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, those are kind of easy to come by these days. And so, like, yes. And I was thinking about the Poton fight where Poton sleeps him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you spend you the right amount. You just posted today about your black belt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I did, didn't I? But, like, if you think about the, <laughs> the Piera, Piera had so much more power. Strong. Strong. Drickus has power, yeah. but like with the uh, uh, Whitaker fight, it took him like four or five shots before he put him down, and then he got the TKO. Same with uh, Till. Did you watch that fight? Darren Till? Yeah. Dude, he gets tired as crap, and 
he's just trying to rip overhand right, and Strickland is uh, Till's striking and uh, are about the same. So that means he's probably going to get outstruck. But Strickland has gas for days, and that his style is walked down. Just Doesn't it just seem, though, like, I mean, if you watch a lot of fights, Drake, as it seems like, is one of the few in there that's having active fun. Like, mm -hmm. he's smiling while he's in there. Doesn't seem like, doesn't, don't you think that plays a big role is that he's able to go in there with less nerves because he's having fun with it? I mean, either way, but that's only going to be effective for round one. Drake has got to knock him out, which is possible. I mean, but... I mean, Alex knocking you out, I don't think it means you have a bad chin. Here's the thing is that... Uh, just but no one else is knocked out, Strickland. <laughs> my opinion from a casual fan standpoint, it feel, Strickland feels like Aljo for, for me right now. Yeah. Because it feels like he got lucky against Adesanya. Yeah. Feels like he hasn't he hasn't beaten any... I mean, he got his ass whooped by Potan. Well, okay, look at his uh, last fight when... Uh, what was his name? Some Russian dude. Undefeated. Strickland has the more uh, tough uh, resume. Like, his resume is way tougher. Yeah, but he's a, they, he's a point fighter. Yeah, but... Drake is an animal. Yeah, but, like, he who, you, who do you rather get locked in a cage with today? Drake is. No. Yeah. No. Because yeah. Drake just doesn't animal. stop. He's a zombie, bro. He just keeps <laughs> coming. I remember when our friend Court fought him, and I was in Court's corner. Court kicked him so hard in the head, his ear exploded. And he was like, man, fuck you, fuck you. And I was like, oh, shit. Try it again. And then he just, run, Court, yeah, yeah. run. Get out get of there. Get out of there. Court's winning, you throw in the towel. Yeah, yeah. I was like, he's crazy, dude. Yeah. But I mean, and I have uh, one of my black belts used to train with him, and he would say the yeah, same thing. Yeah, but don't thing. you think that catches up to you eventually? I mean, you can be the just solid chin guy forever, but eventually that goes away. Yes, Yes, so and that if, is, if but it's not there. But the thing is, you don't know the fight that it's going to go away. So Strickland is trading on the fact that he knows that he's got a very strong chin. One day it won't be, and, yeah. but you don't know until it's not. Yeah, you don't know until you Not get, to mention. Until you wake up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> not to mention the staph infection. Well, okay. Not a staph infection. What is it? A burn from him playing uh, Roman Candles with Nina. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe got infected, but I don't think it's a staph infection. You, so you're saying it's not staff? No, I think that was just a rumor. So I think because he got they released a video of him and Nina playing uh, Roman Candle War, and, they, and then did you see Strickland bit him? Yeah. Bit who? Strickland in their fight. He oh, admitted to that. it. He was on the field. He's like, "Yeah, good thing they didn't get the other angle." Because right here, I was just thinking, I want to hurt him as bad as I can. So <laughs> I tried Theo, to bite him. What did you think of that? Did you watch the Theo? I podcast? did. That was, uh, I mean, the emotional part. But to be honest. It do, I get that he's gone through these terrible things. I'll never understand him, right? Yeah. But he's a crazy person because afterwards he's like, "That's why I honestly want to kill a man." Yeah. Like you can't say, you can't honestly want to kill, kill a man. So, yeah, and it's like you can't. He's justifying his actions through his trauma. Well, guess what? I could go. I'll cry on this yeah, we podcast. All trauma, yeah. yeah, I have my trauma. I have similar stories there, bro. Like yeah, we all I got trauma, up. but it doesn't matter. You can't just say. And then you can't, you in that be, same <laughs> breath, say, Drickus shouldn't say that. It's like, you're saying you want to take somebody's life. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's such a hypocrite. But, I mean, either way, I don't think it's going to affect his fighting. I think he's trying you know, to, he's beating Drickus some isn't... allegations yeah. as well. He's on that <laughs> allegation. You don't think Drickus is in his head, though? I think, because Drickus seems so carefree. Yeah, so, and that's where I can see it being a problem. But I also see, I mean, Drickus coming out to his first UFC title, in a big city like yeah. Toronto, and then his cardio, man. I don't think – unless he finishes him first round, he might take him down and hold him down, but he's not going to finish Strickland on the ground because literally I'm telling you from a technical standpoint, his wrestling is rudimentary. Like watching – I was just at a wrestling tournament all weekend. Like his wrestling wouldn't even be able to win a high school tournament. You don't think Drickus – you don't think Canada is going to be more of a Drickus crowd since they're from yes. England? You know? Yes, no, and it'll be a. And I think of anything that might be against him. Like I think he likes being like the underdog and stuff, while everyone's going to be booing Strickland. Yeah. When I think that might piss Strickland off, but I think either way, I don't think their uh, mental state is going to affect their. You don't think their their performance is based on those outside factors when they're at this level? At this level, yeah. yeah but Jake talked about Jake Shields talked about when he's walking out with GSP in Canada. He's like, holy. And that's goodness. why he lost. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like so he was even star at the top level. You can't. Because Jake really, 
since then has grappled with GSP, inspired with him, and was able to beat him in the room. Yeah, so don't you think uh, with in their heads, I mean, Drickus has already taken a punch from Sean. Yeah. Uh, of course, it wasn't a, a one in the octagon. That but Sean doesn't hit you hard. Sean's going to wear you down with 150 punches around. He's like a Diaz brother more, you know? He's not uh, – but Drickus, I think he's going to be the fan favorite and be like, oh, I'm going to finish him. And then probably Maybe shoot his wad too early. Yeah, kind of like. And then I was even uh, watching, you know, the Whitaker fight. And that's, yeah, that's a great win. But realistically, that's a washed up Whitaker. I think I'm. Um, you know what I mean? Like th- that Whitaker <coughs> you don't looks think, slow. I don't think Whitaker's washed at this point, though. Yeah, but he's not top he's 10. He's still a gatekeeper. Not top 10. No. I don't know. He dude. looks slow, bro. At middleweight, like. Uh, that fight this weekend, Whitaker would get his ass kicked by Johnny Walker or no. Nah. Well, Johnny Walker's big. Johnny Walker's two hundred five. Oh yeah, that's right. Are they two hundred five or yeah. eighty five? No, no, Johnny Walker's a two hundred five. No, he's a middleweight. Middleweight. Yeah, that's a is middleweight he? fight. He's big for. That's him. what I'm saying. And then the Russian dude he's fighting. Remember the rematch? Mm. That's this weekend. That'll be a good one. Uh, where that, he, I should, that I should have gotten paid on. Yeah, yeah, he should have got paid on, but luckily, thank you. Thank you, uh, the, the lack of uh, Abu Dhabi's yeah, nose the of the of rules. Integri- integrity. <laughs> I don't think they even knew what to call, yeah. though. I think they were confused. It, they are light heavyweight. Oh, they are yeah, light yeah, heavyweight. Okay. Yeah. All right. But, I mean, I'm just saying, like, any other middleweight right now would probably be a rough fight. Even, like, a Chris Curtis. Chris Curtis is fighting no, this weekend. No. He would be a nightmare matchup. Chris Curtis was getting pieced up by that fat guy in this in that video we were just watching. Yeah, I mean, but <laughs> minus that, because he's probably letting I'm just him. Kidding. He, yeah. was, he was bullying that. Fat. Did you see that video where he was bullying that? Yeah. Fat guy? And Strickland was like, "Do you want me to step in or what?" Yeah, seriously. Yeah, he's like, "Do you need help?" <laughs> okay, so I, to be honest, I'm putting the house on Drickus. I think that is probably one of the cleanest uh, cleanest bets you could put. And what are the odds right now? Sh- Sean's a slight favorite. Sean's a favorite? Yeah. Oh, dude, pay me. All right. Well, I'll take it straight to the bank. Drickus is plus 110. So yeah. Oh, let's do even, even, even. 100 bucks. Okay, bet. Yeah, bet. <laughs> Generous of me, but okay. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> uh, I'll give you the $10, okay? <laughs> okay, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> well, 110. Well, we should go drop a bet on uh, – we should go drop a bet on – I'm going to drop it on Drickus. I think that Johnny Walker's about to get murdered. You, yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> think Johnny Walker. I think if anything, that guy is gonna murder him, dude. Yeah. But I think that's the fight. He night. was already getting murdered. And then, dude, you know, the rest of the card for the Drinkus one's kind of like lame. Lame. Mm-hmm. I know. Why do you think they did that? It's first card of the year. Yeah, that was. I think maybe they're just having a hard time. But then, two ninety eight and two ninety nine are fire. You know, like those are two of the best cards you've ever seen put out by the UFC. Uh, Poirier versus. Uh... But no. Uh-huh. Saint Benoit. Saint, it's, that's actually going to be instead of the BMF title, that's going to be the hardest name to say title. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Poirier versus Poirier, yeah. Saint Benoit. Yeah, right? these French. We're all these French fucks coming from. <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, but that's a five round co, and then they just five rounds. It's for a championship. No, just a five or five round main. I think right. Co main. Co main. So, so will they get uh, pay per view points for that then? I don't think so. No, because I think. Man, imagine having to fight five rounds and not no get pay for, no yeah. points against a tough ass dude. I think they asked for the five round fight though. They wanted it. But Poirier is savage. You know what I mean? Like this everyone. Is his first fight since getting knocked out by Gaethje, huh? Yeah, bro, and he's coming against the number one kid that's coming out. Uh, with uh, <clears throat> and Ga- then Shavkat. That Gaethje fight was like eight months ago. Yeah, Vegas or it was Salt here Lake, in Salt July, Lake. July, right? July. Okay, so about seven months ago. Yeah, he took it. I mean, that's not a, it's not a huge break, but it was a long one. Yeah, it was a long. Did break. you see about uh, Poton wanting to fight Tom Aspinall? Yeah, I saw that Ooh. on three hundred. Ooh. Ooh, that's scary for Poton. You, you think so? Yeah, dude, he'd be the first ever three I division can't see champ, him. dude. Aspinall would just take him down. He's, he's Aspinall's just, grappling is amazing, yeah. dude. Like everyone doesn't realize how good he is. Yeah, but not, he's English. They come up on like beans and toast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Poton uh, has just been eating meat from panthers, uh, <laughs> bananas straight yeah, from the tree, straight from the tree, ayahuasca straight from peel the vine, peel peel everything. It. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh. so yeah. I mean, that's but dude, a Tom three, will a kill three him. division champ would be unbelievable. Yeah, no, I don't think that's even possible to be honest. I like Poton, but. 
His grappling. Plus, plus, him and his girl are broken up now. Yeah. So he's angry. He's angry. You yeah. want to be one of those guys fighting him when he's angry? Or, or no. he's out partying. Yeah. What if, what if no, he's out he's, with girls all I day? Think, I think he's doing the, the retention, you know, where he's not busted. Not I don't know, bro. Angry. Do you follow him on social media? <laughs> he's he, doing, he's he was doing... posting a picture with his. Did you see that? Him in his nice white shirt in front of his Lambo with his uh, chest out, like no, a six I pack. Think, I think he's doing No Nut 2024. No way. He's <laughs> doing, he's doing uh, fine as many <laughs> girls as he he can. He has literally been the number one like, like an eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like putting up like sexual <laughs> pictures nonstop. Yeah, I know mm. that. And then they just said to uh um what's his name for uh Charles Oliveira versus yeah, yeah, Armand. What do you think Armand? <laughs> uh what do you think about uh Connor and Chandler at 185? No way. Dude, that'd be Come a crazy on. fight because they're short. They're like five eight. Yeah, there's little one chodes out there. <laughs> oh, slow. Come on, dude. I feel like Connor's just teasing us. You think he's not going to fight? Until I see him walking out, I don't believe it. Heavy Why, work. man? Uh, he said July. He said July, huh? Yeah, and then I mean the new. Week. Oh, and Usada now is officially no more part of yeah. the UFC after December. Who do you know who they're bringing in? Uh, Nifs, some mm. other organization. So or something. what's the point? Is it just far less aggressive or what? Dude, I mean, USADA's fake, bro. Like, everyone thinks it's real, but USADA's, you get these. What's your opinion on uh, Bilal going to Dagestan to avoid testing? Well, maybe before. Now, USADA's not in there. I don't know. Because now, because that was why it's fake. USADA's not allowed in Russia or Dagestan. So these guys aren't getting tested. And not to mention, remember Brock Lesnar getting variants, uh, you know, uh, Conor McGregor. So, like, it's not a consistent, fair pull. And they're saying the new one can go anywhere because it's a private organization. So they should be able to go to Russia. So I hope it works out, you know. And it's like uh, the group that apparently got Osama Bin Laden or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> what about uh, when, is Kevin, so, when is Kevin Lee? So they're used to going through those caves of Afghanistan <laughs> to find those. Th to yeah. So hopefully they can find all those uh, steroids in some Dagestan caves. <laughs> they found Osama they can find. Yeah. <laughs> Khabib shooting up. Yeah, they find whatever their dealer guy's name is running around. Uh, when is Kevin Lee MVP supposed to happen? Oh, dude, 298. That one That's I'm you, excited. You think, gonna be, you think Kevin, because MVP's old now, huh? Yeah, I mean, we missed MVP. I think Bellator kind of took his, took yeah, his, took prime. his prime. And then I think, too, the, the fact that they didn't just take his prime, they gave him easy matchups, so yeah. he never developed and anything. never had uh, really, uh, never got his real legacy because he was fighting a bunch of tomato cans. Tomato cans. And then, like, you know, he knocked out, uh, uh, what's his name? As husband, you know, dang. Oh, 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 oh cyborg. Yeah, cyborg. So yeah. She, she, he knocked out cyborg, but cyborg was like forty at the time. Was that the one when he crushed his head. Yeah, and crushed oh. his skull, and everybody's like, loves that uh, interview. But you know, it's like, or that highlight. But I mean, he crushed the skull of like a forty-year-old jujitsu guy that was like, yeah, he could die like this, flat-footed, and he's just like, and he's doing all his like, oh yeah, and I think Kevin Holland was be like. You know, oh, I said crime. Kevin Lee. It's Kevin Holland. Yeah, Kevin Holland. And I think Kevin Holland's just going to take him down in a little foreshadow. Right there, the name. <laughs> Wait. Maybe some people figure it out. What am I missing? We'll figure it out. If you figure it out, you figure it out. <laughs> okay. You just named her out. You figure it out, right? <laughs> All right, anyways. But then, like, Kevin Holland, I think, is going to uh, probably choke him out. Cool. I think Kevin Holland takes him down. I mean, we'll talk about that more in another episode. Getting there. Diego's and then the last thing though, so we were talking about the Bilal fight, but what about Shafkat submitting was, Wonder Boy? Yeah. And the other thing I want to talk about is that Bryce Mitchell knockout. It was nasty. Being live there was insane. Yeah, I thought it was dead, but the Shavkat one, we had we actually had Wonder Boy's family right behind us. Yeah, yeah. At the fight. And we all bet on Shavkat, so we're trying to be like, oh, <laughs> like, oh Wonder Boy. <laughs> Literally his well, we're like, oh, please, like, Shavkat. Yeah, we're <laughs> <laughs> we got these, we're Wonder Boy's family. We're, we're like, like, oh, go Wonder Boy. Yeah, and, but Shavkat <laughs> with a busted up ankle. I and, mean that dude's nasty. And Wonder bro. Boy's never been submitted, but Wonder Boy still looks good. And him and Tony are the same age. Yeah, it's crazy the the difference in the two. I think him and Tony. Are, I think Wonder Boy can still fight, but Tony just can't. You know what I mean? But even then, I felt like Wonder Boy, he was slower. He's his 
ability of his timing and speed wasn't there. So all he's going to do is get kind of just beat up. But he's still, I mean, I think he still should be allowed in the division. Tony should, they should force retire him. Yeah, force retire him. But, but Wonder Boy, I mean, at least he still has a place. He, Shavkat is even with a busted ankle is an animal. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? I mean, even I mean, his grappling is top notch in the world, and it showed it. But like, uh, <clears throat> I mean, at what point do you think they should be the commission come in and be like, "Sorry, Tony, we can't give you another license." Yeah, we can't let this keep happening. Right. The thing is, he might like murder their families though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously. So it might be just out of self preservation that they let him keep let fighting. him keep going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I want to see that commission coming in and be like you can never be a commission fight again like you know because yeah. it's kind of sad bro i mean honestly like everyone thinks i don't like him because he beat me but i always want to see him win you got a you got a little shout out at ufc 296 <laughs> <laughs> at least i'm on the screen bitch <laughs> on tony's uh yeah on tony's of course they like that they highlight show, they show ramsey getting beat up <laughs> Yeah, you missed it though. Thank God, dude. You missed it. Well, cool. It was incredibly fun. I think we've got a really fun. It's been uh, a fun uh, sixteen episodes. I got. I think we got a really fun year ahead of us, and and uh, let's go after and get it. Let's do it. Thanks, guys, for tuning in, coaching the casual for these last sixteen episodes. We've got some really exciting stuff coming up. Some really fun fighters. Uh, we're going to be traveling around doing uh, some cool things. Subscribe to our channels and uh, follow the ride. Thanks for tuning into the Coach and the Casual. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, and share it with your friends. Thanks again.